Take your Bibles tonight, please, and go to 2 Corinthians. I told you a little while ago in the announcement that Jesus Christ sent out the apostles two by two when he sent out the twelve. And later on, as you know, he sent out 70 more, and he sent them out two by two. And I've learned long ago that whenever you can do things as closely aligned and patterned to what Jesus Christ did, you're pretty well walking in alignment and harmony and guaranteed success. As I was developing this particular evening in my heart and life, there are so many things in God's Word that I could share with you regarding the national and international outreach via the ambassador program that if you wanted to stay perhaps another three hours, I could cover half of what I know is in the word for ambassadors. And I'm sure you don't want to stay that late tonight. So I just want to share some of the basics with you. And this great record in 2 Corinthians is not unfamiliar for the grads of the class on Power for Abundant Living because it's in this part that I bring my umbrella and my suitcase and a few others into the picture. But in the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians, it says in verse 18, And all things are of God, 2 Corinthians 5, 18, everybody's eyes in the word. And all things are of God, who hath, by the way, the text includes the word new after things. All things new, because when you're born again, you become new. All things new are of God, who hath, past tense, reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? God has reconciled. To reconcile means to bring back together that which has been separated. You take an electric line that has been broken. When they, when they put that line together, it is technically reconciling that line bringing back together that which has been separated. And this verse declares very beautifully that God hath reconciled, reconciled us to himself. The separation was between God and whom? Man, because he was just a natural man, body and soul without spirit, had no connection. So God reconciled man to himself, brought him back together brought them back together. And he did that most beautifully by condescending in his son, Jesus Christ, who became man. Absolutely beautiful. So that you and I might become the righteousness of God in him. He brought Jesus Christ down, so to speak, so that you and I might be brought up to him. God has reconciled us to himself. God reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Not by God, but by whom? That's what it says, class. That's what it means. Jesus Christ was not God. God's God. Jesus Christ is who? Soup is what? You know that, right? You have to become a confused adult Christian to know that God is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is God. The word does not state it at all. God reconciled us to himself, not by God. He didn't reconcile us to himself by God, but by whom? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's right. Now look what he did. After he reconciled us, reconciled us, then he gave to us, hath given to us. He gave it. He gave it. He gave it. He gave it. Well, God's no Indian giver, you know, like I am. I give a pack of gum to the kids and borrow three sticks back. <laughs> uh, God gave, hath given, hath given. He has given it. Class, just think about that for a moment. Hath given it. If I take this beautiful bouquet of carnations tonight and I give it 
to Stephanie over here. If I give it to her, once I've given it to her class, who's got it? That's right. All the world can say she hasn't got it. She knows she's got it. And I know she's got it because I gave it to her. Now, God's not any stupider than I am. That's for sure, right? <laughs> Don't answer that one. <laughs> God has given. He has given. He gave to us the ministry of what? That's right. The ministry of reconciliation. He gave it to us. Whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you know what you got. The ministry of what? That's right. And you're responsible for what you got. So if you never want to have the ministry of reconciliation, just don't get born again. <laughs> That's right. But the moment you got born again, and it's God in Christ in you, the hope of glory, God gave to you the ministry of us. He didn't give it to angels. He didn't give it to clergymen. He didn't give it to Harvard grads or Princeton grads or college grads. He gave it to believers, born again of God's truth. Now, if you happen to be a theologian, great. If you happen to be a college grad, great. If you happen to be a farmer, beautiful. If you happen to be a factory worker, wonderful. If you happen to be a woman washing dishes, gorgeous. Every born again believer has the ministry of us. And ladies and gentlemen, you're responsible for what you got. Someday when you appear before Father, you'll have to give an account of what did you do with that which he gave to you. And you know why most Christians aren't doing much with it? They don't know what they got. Nobody's ever told them what they got except the negative. <laughs> they really do not know that they have the ministry of reconciliation. They really do not know it, sir. If you don't know that you've got a suit, you couldn't put one on, could you? That's right. If you didn't know you had a dollar in your pocket, you couldn't spend it, right? Boy, you see why this ministry is so dynamic and so alive and so vital? All we do is teach people the accuracy of God's Word, and we believe what's written. Well, see, I believe a stupid banker that sends me in, uh, whatever he sends out, I don't get it, but I'm in his bank. But blah, 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 I believe it, right? <laughs> Travel along, and I see a sign next to the bank. It says temperature and time, remember? I believe that. Am I any more illogical if I'm willing to believe God's word? I think it's illogical to believe the sign that says 72 degrees time and temperature and refuse to believe God's word because God's word has stood a lot longer than the temperature and time sign outside the bank. <laughs> That's right. And I believe what the Word says. And that's made all the difference in my life. It's made the difference in yours, too. Right. God hath reconciled, past tense. He hath reconciled. So somebody says to me, oh, you ain't very much. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Don't you tell that to me. Because I got a daddy who created heaven and earth. You can just trace him. Right. You can call me an income boot, but you can't call my father an income boot. That makes me mad. Spiritually. That's right. If you ever tried it on my earthly father, if your earthly father loved you, and if I said anything against your earthly father, what would be? You'd most likely think, well, that stupid VP, what's the matter with him? Well, somebody ought to hit him over the head with a two before, wake him up, or do something. But see, they do that to the heavenly father. We just don't let them do it. Because my heavenly father is who, what the word says he is, and what he gave, he gave. My earthly father give me things. Well, if I have a heavenly father, I've no doubt he can do it because my heavenly father is a little bit bigger than my earthly father because my heavenly father created the heavens and the earth in which we live. That's something my daddy, earthly daddy, never did. He never created nothing. <laughs> right. And he has given to us the ministry, the ministry, the ministry. He's given it to us. Boy, oh boy, what a privilege. What a wonderful joy to have that. Well, bless God. Let's do something with it. Let's move it. He's given it to us. Here's the bouquet of flowers. Got 12 of them in it. Now she can give each one of you, 12 of you, each a flower, right? And then you give the rest of you a leaf off of that thing. See? <laughs> <laughs> no. If you've got it, you can give it away, right? 
you got the ministry of what? That's right. <laughs> and you know what the word ministry means? Literally, I'll get to this a little later on. It means basically service rendered by a servant. That's what the word ministry means. He's given to us the ministry. The ministry. Service to be rendered by a servant. I'm a son of God this way, but I'm a servant to my fellow men. That's the ministry. He's given to us the ministry. Numbers 19, to wit, doesn't say knit wit, says to wit. <laughs> Namely, primarily, God was in what? He wouldn't have had to have been in him if he was God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God was where? Right. Had, had Jesus Christ been God, God wouldn't have had to have been in him. He'd have been God, right? Here, God was where? In whom? And the word of God says it's God in Christ in you when you're born again of God's spirit. Then Jesus Christ said before he sent the works that I do, ye shall what? Oh, boy, someday this thing's going to live in somebody, and when it does, it'll turn you on. And it makes life worth living. It makes life with a capital L, capital I, capital S, capital E, and then double, triple it, and raise it to the nth degree. Just makes life, period. Look at that. God was in Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses, their sins, unto them, and hath committed unto us, he's committed unto us the word of what? There it is. There it is. He's given us the ministry to be of service as servants and to have the word to do the job with. He's committed unto us the word, the word, the word. He's committed it to us. He's committed it to us. And if anybody then is ever going to be really delivered and get knowledgeable of what God made available, you and I are going to have to tell it like it is. Not like people say it may be, not like anybody else may, but read what is written and say what the Word says. He has committed unto us the Word of reconciliation. It's that Word that reconciles men and women to God. That Word that builds believing, and all believing equals what? That's why now, 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 N-O-W, now, not when you die, but right now, right after you're born again of God's Spirit, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, now, 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 we are ambassadors for whom? That's right. We're ambassadors. Whether we like it or whether we don't like it, we have the ministry of reconciliation, we have the word that we're responsible for holding it forth, and we are ambassadors. Whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you're an ambassador. Well, bless God, you ought to like it. People sometimes spend a lot of money politically to get to be an ambassador. Yeah. I guess you've got to support the party right to get to be one. Well, you've got to support God right to get to be one, too. You've got to get born again. <laughs> but when you're born again, you're an ambassador. It's just like a tail on a dog. It's there. <laughs> it's there. Whether the dog likes it or not, he's got a tail, right? It's there. And in your walk, in your walk, you're an ambassador. And the question is not whether you're an ambassador. The question is, how are you walking, baby? How are you walking? How's your walk? How's your witness? What are you really ex exemplifying? What do they see when they see you? Do they see Christ or do they see some cuffed out bird? Some old income poop, some old rotten woman, some old terrible go godless man? Or do they see a man that once again is a real man of God? Do they see a woman that once again is a beautiful woman of God who has principles, commitment, dynamic, who's in control of her life or his life? And just stand. Uh, ambassador. Right. We pray you in Christ said, be reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he, God, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made what? The righteousness of God in him. 
the righteousness of God in him. Ladies and gentlemen, how righteous is that? That's right. There's therefore now no condemnation. Man, the word of God and Jesus Christ within is the only thing I've ever seen that's take con taken condemnation out of people. Otherwise, you're going to go through life. If you're really sincere and honest and you don't want to cheat everybody, you'll be condemned to lifetime. Jesus Christ takes condemnation out. As a matter of fact, in the Old Testament, it says their sins were covered. It's just like a garbage can. There's sin on the inside and he puts the lid on. The Lord's sake, never take the lid off. Right. But according to the record of the epistles, he, not, he doesn't put the lid on. He cleanses us on the inside. You, you just smell like Chanel number no. 5 on the inside. Or something. You, you just have a beautiful radiation. Somebody wants to describe it as swallowing a bushel of sunshine. <laughs> you're just totally effervescing from the inside. You're electrifying. You're dynamic. You're loving. You're kind. You're patient. You're long-suffering. You just live that way. Isn't that beautiful? Boy, made the righteousness of God in him, the righteousness of God in him, in Christ Jesus. We then, verse 1, are workers together. With him is properly supplied. Boy, oh boy, what a category to have be a worker together with God through Jesus Christ. That's moving in top echelon, people. That's moving with what in the census world they call top brass. To move, to be a worker together with God who created the heavens and the earth, what a privilege. Boy, what a W.O.W. -W. What an ambassador. What a privilege. To be a worker together with God. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a great joy in serving. And in our international and national outreach, it's learning to serve is also a joy. And you have to teach people how to serve so they learn to serve with joy. Many times to serve someone in the census world, it's just a lot of baloney. And the only reason they serve is because they get paid at the end of the week or middle of the week. Otherwise, they say nothing to you. Yeah. Uh, in the outreach program, like we were talking tonight about the, the whole ambassador program, the, the three walls, the college, the medical, all of those, it's learning to give in order to receive. By the way, it's also the learning of the joy of work. Because so many times people don't like to work. You know, so you get to be a WOW out on the field. And then, boy, you, you, you start seeing the principle that you've got the ministry, you've got the word, you're an ambassador. And therefore, those four hours on that field, like the WOWs work, that four hours, they get into that work and they learn to enjoy working. I feel sorry for people who are learning to enjoy their retirement. You know, at 35, they're thinking of retiring at 62. Good Lord. That's about the time you get a few brains, you want to retire. <laughs> retire. Maybe if you want to retire, be an automobile. But boy, if you want to be a son of God, you live with the dynamic. Hey, it didn't say in that scripture that we have the ministry of reconciliation till we're 62. Sorry, you adults. <laughs> you can't beat that. One. Doesn't say that the word of reconciliation terminated at 62. Right? Yeah. Hate to tell you adults that. That's the truth of God's word. I love to tell you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement has to be, be for people who have no goal in life, no great impetus, no great drive, no great love for others. Selfish, yes, selfish, that's crazy. It's me, oh Lord, yes, yeah, all me. Go ahead, retire and die quick. Get out of the way so the rest of the believers can live dynamically or do something. Boy, oh boy, what do you want to die for? What do you want to retire for when you've got a ministry to carry out, a word to do it with, when you can bring men and women to God and see their lives change? Great. Part of that's the joy of work. Golly, I thank God I can work. 
If you're not thankful that you can work, I'll take you to a few places tomorrow, could, where there are people who are so totally emaciated they can't work. Maybe if you were in that condition, you might be thankful you could work. That's like you can complain about having no shoes until you meet a man who has no feet. Boy, I thank God for work. 20 hours a day, I thank God. If I could stand at 23 and a half, I'd do that in two. Just for the joy of working, I just get the biggest kick out of working. I just love to work. I love to work people. <laughs> I learned the word of God that God never gave his word to lazy duffers. Everybody who ever received an abundance of God's word were men and women who believed God and who worked. Who worked. Men and women who, I, who really worked. They're the ones to whom God revealed his word. I can't imagine and it is just Paul never was a slouch. You know, even when he persecuted the Christians, he worked. <laughs> Later on, boy, when he got to, on the other side of the fence, he worked just as hard or maybe harder. He had a real joy in working. There's joy in working. But you know why most of the kids don't know joy in working? Because your parents didn't teach them joy in working. Give them to me in the corner, W.O.W., I'll teach them. Most parents do. <laughs> uh, right. We teach our young people to enjoy work. It's part of the training of life. God, oh, God, I hate to mow grass. Good. Mow it! <laughs> That's the core. <laughs> The finest way to get to do something is to tell me you don't want to. <laughs> you see, just to have the joy of working, that's part of being an ambassador. Part of being an ambassador for God. Isn't it wonderful? Another great thing about the outreach is the disciplined living. Most people are so undisciplined they never live. They merely exist. Living comes in discipline. That's why the, the word means the disciple, a disciple, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, means the disciplined one. One who is disciplined. If you're a disciple, you're disciplined. There is no living with a capital L until you get that discipline. And that's a discipline. I can't put it on you. You, by your own choice, discipline your life. You know, do you want to go down the drain or do you want to go up the ladder? <laughs> Depends on whether you're a spider or... Well, you sign up. Discipline living. Just imagine, imagine getting up at 6.30 in the morning. Who ever heard about getting up at 6.30 in the morning? Because after all, Mom and Dad let me sleep in till 10. You get up at 6.30. 4.30. 4 Lord, that has to be enslavement. <laughs> That discipline, that self-discipline is fantastic, boy. And that's what the ambassador is all about. The ambassador has the joy of serving. He learns to serve. He learns to receive by giving because all the laws of receiving are contingent upon the laws of giving. If I want to receive strength in this arm, I don't hang it here and say, Army, get strong. If I want the strength in this arm, I give, I give, I give. And as I give in exercise, I build up my biceps or whatever is up here. Right? The whole law of life is that. And to be an ambassador, you have to be giving in order to be receiving. And you have to enjoy working. And you have to have that discipline that goes with it if you want to succeed. Well, yeah. you know, it says in the Word of God, and I'm going to read you these because I've got it all written out here. It says in the Word of God that as ambassadors, we're also soldiers. And the word soldier means one who is trained and disciplined to battle. Secondly, it says we are servants. And the servant is this is one who serves. And I taught you, told you earlier that the word ministry is service rendered by a servant. We're sons of God perpendicular 
but we are servants on a horizontal level to all the peoples of the world. You see, our pulpit is the world. <laughs> My whole thinking of this teaching platform is not international. It is international to the end that it's worldwide. This little trip set here, my vision of this thing that I'm teaching tonight is not this little trip set near, but it's the world. The world's my pulpit. The world's your pulpit. The whole world. Not just little international headquarters or Timbuktu or some other little town. It's the world is our pulpit for the declaration of the greatness of God's word. So we're servants. Number three, it says we're stewards. A steward is second in command in a household. A steward is the one who has been given the power of attorney. We are second in command. God first, the believer second. That's why we are stewards, like the Nomi. Number four, it says we're witnesses. And that means one who witnesses, a live witness a living witness to the greatness of the power of God. Number five, it says we're slaves. And the word is doulos. A slave is a renewed mind committed son of God. A servant is committed, but a slave is a renewed mind committed. It's a deeper commitment than the word servant. Doulos is where you're so committed that nothing will shake you. You're just committedly, committedly committed. Just sold out. That's it. If it never comes to pass, it still does it. Then you're committed. That's doing it. Number six, it says there are fellow workers, and I read you about a while ago. Fellow workers with God. And number seven, of course, is where I began. We are ambassadors. Those are things that are given in the Word regarding that whole field of our national and international outreach of every born-again believer who has the ministry and the Word of reconciliation. I brought a couple letters with me that I want to share with you tonight. I could share hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters like these that I'm going to read tonight do very little of this because we have so many signs, miracles, and wonders we wouldn't get anything else done but tell about the signs, miracles, and wonders. But I thought tonight in this particular phase, and these are just not letters that I had to get down in the pile and pick out. These just all came in this week. So it's rather current. We get them all the time. The first one I want to share is regarding power for abundant living. And that, of course, is sort of a good class. To get people to God's word and get God's word into people. Rest to me. And it says, God bless you with the fullness of his, of his capacity in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. My husband and I completed the power for abundant living class. And the, and the words I find are inadequate to thank you for the love and care you have poured into your teaching. You were sitting beside each of us during each session, holding our hands and directing our first step toward the beautiful Word of God. My husband and I have been married for 11 years and have two sons. We had lived the first 10 of these years with resentment and malice toward each other. Neither of us expected to remain married through this year. Our negative belief and the tension surely was reflected in our children. I was first introduced to the way two years ago, but at that time I was rather enjoying my unhappiness and rejected the love and guidance offered me. The goodness of the believer's words came back to me repeatedly during the following year, however, and by mid-1975, I called them saying that I would go to the Rock of Ages with them. My husband would not go, but as it was in my heart to learn more, 
my sons and I went without him. The beauty and tenderness we encountered there was compounded by the miracles and teaching we witnessed to make me hunger for more of God's wonderful word. My husband agreed to attend a fellowship with me. Incidentally, the first I attended also. Our children were in children's fellowship at the same time, and when they returned to the room afterward, their faces radiated to the extent that the entire room was illuminated. When my husband saw this, after hearing the teaching of a single fellowship meeting, he signed a check for the Power for Abundant Living class. We have been blessed continually since that moment. At times when we had no money, the food in our house lasted twice the time it normally would. When we had little money for food, everything we needed was drastically reduced in the supermarket. My husband needed a pair of shoes. The need was there, but he shared it with no one but God. The next day, our neighbor, an elderly man, sent over a new pair of shoes which did not fit him well. Guess who they fit? <laughs> I could go on and on and on, as each day brings an increase to the abundance. But I'm sure this does not surprise you. After all, you taught us that this is to be ours to the extent of God's ability. Last night, when we spoke in tongues, the power and glory of our Lord was finally and forever shown to us. The beautiful saints standing behind us, and you before us, encircled us with the purest love through Christ Jesus. As we spoke, tears and laughter periodically punctuated the spirit's utterance. The joy we felt was too great to be contained in one small, bursting heart. The love and gratitude we feel for you is boundless, and we lift you daily in our spiritual prayer. If we might in some small way offer you any help, it would bless us enormously with love in Christ. That's the result of a class called Power for Abundant Living, of a husband and wife who for 10 years just kept building up, building up all the resentment and bitterness. Change. What changed their life? The Word of God. The Word of God. For when that Word of God is properly planted and watered and believed, God does what? Gives the end. Well, in order to get to be a W.O.W., you do have to take a class called Power for Abundant Living. And after that, you can go W.O.W., and here is a W.O.W. letter. This one is addressed to Mr. Weingarner. This past month, I've been amazed, really amazed, at what I've been learning as a while this year. Joy is what I'm bubbling over to. Being thankful for what God has given me has stopped me from limiting him. I can't do without this family, and especially my father. Jesus Christ says in John 5:30, "I came of my own, I can of my own self do nothing." I'm realizing that when I let him bless me every day, life sure is exciting. Limiting God gets me nowhere. Dr. Werwell taught us that real love is giving, and real giving is living. I wrote a song about this a couple of months ago and wondered how could I make this more real in my life. Being thankful to our Father has made it come true. We have the privilege of reconciling people back to God. And what a privilege it is. Giving is a joy. I've grown to the point that I love people even if they could care less about me. I just remember they don't have in life what I have. There is no reason to get bitter with them. All they need is a little love, care, and concern. What a freedom I've come to in my life. Every day now, there is so much to be thankful for. Just realizing this for once in my life is another thing to be thankful for. It is an honor to know there are two sides to believing, and I can be sharp about taking the positive side. Now that is something to be thankful for. Dan Moran's song is a perfect example of what all or a great majority of us wows 
or learning. He says, so if you want to grow, you might want to know you've decided to be an ambassador. Life is becoming more great and fun every day. I love this life and speak God's word because I want others to have it. Being a wow has taught me to be grateful and will to continue. I love you and thank you for your concern for all of us in Christ, your sister, and that is a W.O.W. Wonder if reach another W.O.W. and this one's addressed to me. Greetings in the name of Christ Jesus. I'm a W.O.W. ambassador in Knoxville, Tennessee. I've been tremendously blessed by operating God's principles of giving, receiving, and believing. Receiving so much that I felt it is on my heart to write and share it with you. Before I came out as a W.O.W. ambassador, I had set several goals to accomplish. One was to operate giving equals receiving to my maximum capacity so I could really begin to see the full scope of this great part of God's work. When I arrived in Knoxville, I had one small suitcase of clothes and wearing a pair of tennis shoes. I thought the best way to begin in the area of giving would be to abundantly share, so I decided to give half of my paycheck to abundant charity. After that, things really started popping. <laughs> one person I witnessed to and took the Power for Abundant Living class gave me a car, a young concordance to the Bible, and listen to this, has to be a girl, has taken me out to dinner several times. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> These W.O.W.'s get it coming in from everywhere. Gave me a bunch of art equipment, a painting of Rembrandt flowers, and I could go on and on. One of the college wilds here gave me several pairs of jeans, some dresses, and a pair of dress shoes. You know, I was tremendously blessed when my parents came 800 miles all the way from Corpus Christi, Texas, to visit me. It was also the first time they'd been to a swing meeting. There is not room enough in my heart to share with you all the blessings that God has poured out upon me, the seminars, visits from the rovers, the running of the PFAL classes, branch meetings, have all blessed me beyond words. We're looking forward to seeing Joyful Noise concerts the 25th of this month. Our whole twig is going to attend. I praise God for your faithfulness and stand on God's rightly divided word. God bless you richly. Another W.O.W. How's that? That's something. <laughs> the final one I'm going to read you now is a core person. Started with a class on power for abundant living, going W.O.W. I want to show you somebody in the core. Address to me. God bless you in that name that continues to become more real to us every day, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today, at the point of my life and growth in God's Word, I have something burning on my heart that I desire to share with you. As far as I can remember, I've never personally expressed my overwhelming gratitude to you for uh, concerning how the CORE program literally set our marriage in its truly honorable position. Sometime before we entered the CORE in the fall of 1974, our marriage was not only on the rock, it was out in the deep, gasping for breath. <laughs> not more than a few weeks prior to going into the court, someone told us that if you really haven't got it all together, you better not go in the court. Because you'll never get your marriage together in the court. And that we should forget the court. But a few days following that, uh, a few days following, we were most miserable until Donnie Fugit corrected us by saying that there was nowhere else in the world that made things gel any better than at International. And we both believed it. The results came abundantly. I do not attribute our success to an excessive amount of concentration and various tactics used in our lives together to get it together. We didn't do this. I do base our victory on the fact that the Corps poured out such an abundance of God's Word to us that we both individually began to really love ourselves. Hence, it was simple to love each other. This year on the field is fantastic. The greatest thing I've seen about marriage is that it is something that builds every day. It builds as each gives to the other. I see no way that any of this giving would be done correctly unless priorities 
are understood and carried out. By this I mean that the greatest decision that a person can make is the unqualified commitment of Romans 